Land is the subject we're talking about this weekend. Good quality farmland, what's it bringing? We've asked that question of Jason Lestina, who joins us in the studio. Land Pro LLC is the firm that he's with. Welcome back, sir. Thank you for having me. There isn't much opportunity for these land prices to climb near term, is there? I mean, given the fact that commodity prices are still so low, forecast to continue to be low, interest rates expected to be climbing a little bit, that's going to keep a damper on the land market, isn't it? I think the land market's going to be fairly steady to slightly declining in the near future. Uh, and now something happens in the commodity markets that we get a boost in the prices, whether it be exports or a weather-related issue. Uh, if we can get the commodity prices to go back up, I think there's a chance that uh, the land values will stay steady or even possibly increase, but not without the commodity prices going back up. What we've been talking about a little bit earlier with you, Steve and I were visiting with you about good quality farmland. If you look at that lesser quality farmland with continued downward pressure on commodity prices, will those values continue to slip? I think they will. I think there's going to always be a demand for the high quality farmland and second being the little bit lower quality farmland. So I, I feel that they're going to continue to slide a little bit. Farm Bill is something we often talk about as being important to certainly to agriculture. We're writing one this year. Uh, does that factor into the whole scheme of things a little bit, especially if there's a good solid safety uh, net there via the uh, crop insurance? I, I think it definitely helps. It helps uh, farmers set their base and, and, and they feel like there's, uh, there's some opportunities to make some moves in the land market possibly. Um, so they'll take advantage of that. Those farm programs can help kind of even things out when we're in kind of a little bit of a downward turn right now as we are with some of these commodity prices and maybe help out the bottom line of a farmer or a producer. Uh, Jason, as we've seen these things settle lower, are you running into instances where we have sales though of farmers now forced to sell land because of the economic situation that they're in? Uh, it's been very private, but we have heard of farmers having to sell off a parcel or two for working capital. Uh, obviously, they're going to be looking to do that privately and do a sale with the lease back so they can get the working capital that they need and continue to farm that ground. So for now, it's isolated that farmers are having to do that. I feel like that's an isolated issue at this point. Uh, it's not across the board. For buyers, what should they really understand about this market as they might want to enter this? And that can either be for a farmer who wants to acquire some more land or an investor who's looking for an opportunity. Uh, well, in certain cases, the investors are looking more on the return side on whether they can get a, a farm and make it a return. Usually they have a set return that they're looking for, where the farmer, not necessarily the return is that important to them. They're looking more for uh, continue to add to their portfolio and possibly passing on to the next generation. So we, we're seeing two different cases where an investor is looking for the return. In most cases, where the farmer is looking more to continue to add to their land and for the future generation. And is that investment and the opportunity for some return a little bit different right now because maybe cash rents can't be as high as they were a couple of years ago? They are. Investors are being uh, selective on the ground that they, that they purchase. And uh, it's been tough to get the returns they need on the Class A ground because the, the prices have remained strong. Thank you, Jason. Jason Lestina from Land Pro LLC, our guest here today to talk about land values.